In Forbidden Sky, you're trapped in a lightning storm, desperately trying to wire up the circuit to power your rocket ship for two important reasons. One, to escape and win the game. Two, because the rocket ship lights up. I'm back to making passionate, considered reviews of games worth talking about. If you'd like to help support more videos like this, go to patreon.com forward slash actuallol. You've landed on the edge of this floating platform in the sky. It's up to you to explore this deadly place together to find what you need to get the rocket ship working and wire it all up. You explore by adding new sections of the platform and each one has to be connected by wire. You need to build the capacitors required to power the rocket and its massive launch pad. There's a lot of tiles to get through to find what you need and it all takes time you don't have. Here's a life hack for you. Don't stand on a raised platform in a lightning storm and play about with electrical wiring. Because after every turn, the storm attacks. If lightning strikes and you're stood by a massive lightning rod, you get an electric shock and lose health. But it's trickier than that. If you're stood on a tile that is connected by wire to a lightning rod, you still get shocked. That tiny rule brings this story alive. This band of idiots running around in a storm, tripping over wires and getting shocked every five minutes because we foolishly hooked up a lightning conductor to half the platform. It doesn't just make thematic sense, it follows the laws of physics. I live for games that can make me feel the world I'm in through its gameplay. And this is a world-class example. I'm not running scared of the lightning because the game tells me to or because of evocative artwork. I'm scared because I've seen how quickly it can burn someone to a crisp the last time I played. It's really easy to die in this game and if anyone dies, you all lose. So you don't want to end your turn where lightning can get you. Of course, if you spend all your actions putting safety first, you'll never get this rocket ship going and this storm is only getting worse as the game goes on. Early on you face one storm card per turn, but later you'll be flipping three or four. You've got to think really carefully about where you put the tiles and when. You need three lightning rods to power the spaceship so you will have to deal with them, but if you put them down early, they'll be causing you problems all game. If you can get most of the circuit finished, then put them in at the end, you'll be laughing. If only it was that simple. You can only look at so many tiles at once and there's always one lightning rod you start the game with. So you're forced to get even more creative, wiring up the lightning rods so they can't electrify adjacent tiles or putting one of these Faraday cages nearby which protect you from getting an electric shock. Okay, so now you're safe, except you're not. The storm is throwing gale force winds at you that will blow you all over the place. You thought you were being clever, staying away from the lightning rods, but don't worry, the wind will blow you back there just in time to be shocked again. It's hilarious. I love how it depicts the unrelenting chaos of mother nature. It's cinematic. It feels like you're in the climax of an action film as Chris Pratt, Chris Evans or Chris Pine clings onto a pole for dear life, the storm pulling him away from connecting that final wire to power the rocket. If you're on the edge of the platform and the gust takes you, it pulls on the pathetic rope that you've tied yourself down with. You take that risk one too many times and you die. It's another thing you have to plan for. You'll make sure to stand somewhere where there's tiles in the direction the wind is blowing. Very clever. Then the wind changes direction and you end up by a friendly lightning rod again. Building the circuit represents its own challenge because your wires aren't long enough to bridge every gap. You need to plan the placement of your capacitors and launch pads so that everything can reach and create a continuous loop. And don't wire it up too soon because, you guessed it, they make things lightning friendly. How you build this platform is a logistical nightmare and that makes for a great team discussion because everyone has different ideas on what to do. Maybe the best option right now is to place the tile that gets you some gear. It might be the med kit we really need to stay alive. What's important in one game will depend on how things shake out and what characters you pick. If the wind's been causing havoc and you don't have a knotsman on the team to fix your ropes, then you'll want to build wind shelters to stop you from losing the game. The navigator and climber can help move players around more efficiently, so if you're not playing with them, you need to take advantage of the teleports that are on certain tiles or find the jetpack cards. If you win on your first try, it will be a miracle. But just like other great cooperative games, you'll feel within touching distance. You'll be desperate to go again and again to get it right. 
Each time it will present a new challenge that feels different from the last. When you do finally power up that rocket ship, it feels amazing. You will have earned it. And boy, does it give you a fitting reward. You've created a real working circuit. And here are the lights and noises to prove it. Forbidden Sky is a stunning achievement. It's such a complete package. First and foremost, it's a fun, nail-biting game with a delicious puzzle to solve. It's innovative. I've never played a cooperative tile-laying game before, and it works. The lightning and wind mechanisms make your struggle feel real and in such an effortless way. There are but a few light strokes on the canvas, but in the hands of the master of the genre, Matt Leacock, they're a masterpiece. And they remind me of similar notes of his in Pandemic, the definitive co-op board game. Forbidden Sky is the third in a series after Forbidden Island and Forbidden Desert. But this ain't no Godfather 3, it's my favourite of the trilogy. It maintains the simplicity, there's only four actions to understand, but Sky's obstacles give you more to think about. And I find the theme a lot more exciting than endlessly digging up sand. To cap it off, GameRight have designed a product that makes me proud to be a board gamer. What an incredible gift to buy a 12-year-old kid for Christmas, to encourage scientific minds, to teach them about circuits, and the importance of not tying, and most importantly, to get them into board games. This is an amazing place for them to start. But this isn't just for kids, this is a triple A co-op game, and you better believe it's getting some actual love. There's a link to where you can buy Forbidden Sky in the description below. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified when I post my next review. If you'd like to help support more reviews like this, go to patreon.com forward slash actual I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.